It's a horrible, horrible thing we're teaching kids. But I think you get into how do we how do we learn? Humans learn by making mistakes. You know, God designed us. So when a baby learns to walk, baby crawls, stands up and falls, stands up and falls, then finally takes the first step, and the next thing, running, then flying. But what our schools do when a child falls, punish them. You're stupid. You make mistakes. Smart people don't make mistakes. And when the way, when I look at the way humans are designed to learn, we're designed to learn from mistakes. Well, there's two kinds of debt. Now, this is basic financial education or financial literacy, they call it. There's good debt and bad debt. Good debt is debt that somebody else pays off for you. So when I buy an apartment house with my friend Kenny, I don't pay for it. The bank lends us the money and debt is tax free, right? So let's say we put a billion dollars down to buy a five million dollar apartment house. So we now have a, a, a five million dollar asset, and our tenants pay for this. That's good debt. But I take out my credit card to go eat sushi. That's bad debt because I got to pay for it. And it's that simple. So you know when, when people talk to their children and they say, "Look, is that good debt or bad debt?" and it, it forces them to think. Well, the first most important thing about America is freedom. See, you can be a capitalist, you can be a communist. I have a lot of friends who are communists, but they don't know it. They never read the Communist Manifesto. I said, "Thank you." Or you can be Christian, Jewish, Buddhist, Muslim. That's probably our greatest asset is that freedom. I liked what my rich dad was saying because he was an entrepreneur. My poor dad was an employee. Go to school, get a job, and. Steady paycheck, job security. It didn't make me happy, you know. So I went to become an entrepreneur. See, in 1971, when Nixon took the dollar off the gold standard, right, violated, broke, you know, just broke all the rules. And my poor dad kept saying, "Save money." Well, why would you save money when they can print it? You know what I mean? Why would you do that? So I came back. I went to Vietnam twice as a Marine pilot. And I came back, and I couldn't listen to my poor dad anymore. He wanted me to become, you know, fly for United Airlines and get a job in a 401k, and or I don't know that United Airlines pensions are gone. You know, they got looted. Mm-hmm. You know, so I couldn't listen to my poor dad anymore. But this is in 1970, 74, and in 74 was when ERISA was passed. ERISA was. Uh, economic Income Rec- Retirement Security Act. You know, anything the government says they're going to protect, you know, you're in trouble. <laughs> so I'm just like you. I'm going. What are they pulling? That ERISA became the 401k. And what happened then? So this is 1974. I'm just getting out of the Marine Corps. Yeah, you know, my father wants me to go fly for United or Hawaiian. And I go. I don't think I want to do that. I feel set up. So I'm just like you. I just don't trust the sons of the bitches. Do you know what I mean? And then I noticed all these school teachers leaving the school system to become financial planners. And the more I saw that, I went, "Oh my God, they're being set up." So I am just like you. I go, "Why are they doing this?" And so when I saw my father's compadres, you know, all these school teachers with master's degrees, PhDs, becoming financial planners, they were treading into my rich dad's territory. And I got more suspicious. So I, my rich dad finally says, "You know, school teachers becoming financial planners are like the poor leading the blind. I want to know what's really going on behind the scenes. Gold is money. The mm-hmm. Fed cannot print it. Mm-hmm. And at that point, I became more cynical. Yeah. I own gold mines now. Humans learn by making mistakes. You know, you play golf. I'm sure Tiger Woods has hit more bad shots than me. <laughs> He's failed more than me." So when you look at the real reality of the world, the biggest failures are the most successful. They failed their way to success. Was、well, the same way you became successful? You just go against the grain. You know everything my school taught me to do: go to school, get a job, work hard, save money, get out of debt, and invest the, for the long in the long term in IRA or 401k, stocks, bonds, mutual funds, ETFs. I don't do. And I recommend to anybody if you want to find out why America's in trouble. Go knocking door to door in a low rent neighborhood and ask for the rent. You'll hear the American attitude coming out. It's horrifying. The rich are evil, tax the rich, and all this stuff. But a communist will say, "Screw them."
garbage. They're bastards. They steal from us. So it starts with the attitude of the individual. And that's why, you know, like I'm not the, that's why I pray to Rich Dad. I said, we have to teach people to be capitalists because our schools are teaching us to be communists. Communism. I thought I said the Fed is Marxist, central bank. If you understand when you look at the macro, macro of the economy, the Fed, central bank or central control of the economy is the primary reason for Marx. Well, my, my rich test, my, you know, he's a great teacher, no college education. He didn't, he didn't go past the eighth grade. And he said, the problem with bull markets is stupid people look smart. <laughs> and as you know, there's a lot of stupid people right now finding out they're not that smart. And the question I ask people is, if we go into a depression, how will you do? That's the question. So I set it up since 1971 when I saw Nixon take the dog off the gold standard and I started getting smarter. So I'd say, I don't trust my government. Like, don't fight the Fed. And I was like, can the, can the Fed print oil? Can it print gold? Can it print water? Can it print food? No. But people go, oh, don't fight the Fed. So the thing I always say is, in a worst case scenario, how will you do? So that's why I own oil wells, not oil stocks. I own cattle for the food. I own gold mines. I own my own company. My company, you know, Rich Dad did better in the downturn than ever before. So it's not recession proof, but people wake up more and they say, I better get financially educated. And, and, and number six, I never stop studying. You know, it's, it's the most important thing you can do. But that one guy said, it was, I think it was a Russian guy, he says the problem with Americans was we're dysfunctionally optimistic. You know, we live in a don't worry, be happy world. And you know, that's not the real world. <laughs> Consider who's teaching. I mean, I, I think I like about YouTube is I listen to the communist also. This guy, Richard Wolf, makes my skin crawl. But, you know what I mean? He's a hardcore communist. Of course, he's a teacher. And, but I listen to both sides. And YouTube now gives us that luxury or that advantage we didn't have before before you'd have to go to Harvard to listen to those guys. Now you can sit on YouTube and listen to them. You know, like Jordan Peterson got kicked out of academics because he ran into the Communist Teacher Society. So the beauty of, of YouTube and these new social media has got some faults to it, obviously, but it gives us access. And li I listen to all sides, and then I choose. Then I know who I am. And that's when I became political is because I could see what the left was doing. And I went, oh my God. First of all, education is more important. You might be a doctor, lawyer, you know, accountant. School is important. But it's what we're teaching kids now is to be victims. It's a victim mentality. That's where Black Lives Matter, critical race theory, and all the other garbage are pumping out. You're victims. You must get even. And I read the Communist Manifesto in 1965. And everybody should read that book because you can see it happening here today. And so in 1965, I read the Communist Manifesto. 66, I'm in Vietnam for my first time. Went back in 72 and I could see communism spreading. So I become cynical. So I don't know if it's curious what it is. I just became cynical and distrusting of my own government and schools, and teachers, you know, and Wall Street. But I said, I think I'll start questioning everything. I don't recommend anything. I recommend studying. But most people haven't read the Communist Manifesto yet. Do you know what I mean? You should start with that. You know, it was, it was Marx who said a graduated income tax is essential for the spread of communism. Then you have AOC, and she says, tax the rich. I go, she's hardcore Marxists as they come. Do you know what I mean? But we don't know. And then if you look at taxes, America was founded as a tax-free nation. 1773 was a thing called the Boston Tea Party. And now we're taxing everything. But that could only happen because the gold, I mean, the dollar became credit. And the only way you can pay that credit back is via taxes. And so today, America is the largest debtor nation in the world. Our debt to GDP is like 125 Ninety were bankrupt, 125, 
And they and and you know, Powell, the Fed chairman, says we're going to raise rates. He does that. You tell us. They know that, but we still go to school, get a job, and learn nothing about money.